the show is quite long, but not as long as when I saw Ken Dodd at the Open Air Theatre in Regent's Park. And I left after two and a half hours, during the interval, OK? <laughs> he did five hours. I mean, he was 75 then. Uh, five hours of stand-up comedy. I can't even fucking stand up for five hours these days. <laughs> and he bounced out. I mean, I went along somewhat ironically, but he is a legend. We got there, and I went along with a girlfriend, and I was... We were the youngest by about 30 years, I think. Everyone else was, like, in their 70s, and they must follow Doddy around. And they knew they were in it for the long haul. They'd come in cagoules and pack lunches, right? <laughs> and, uh... I don't know if you've been to the Open Air Theatre in Regent's Park, but it's like this, but without a roof, obviously. Um, it's got a stage show and lights, and it's got fixed seating, OK? It's sort of like amphitheatre seating all the way around the outside, um, and there's nothing in the middle. I've just left that wild. You can't sit there. It's just like a... I want to say grassy knoll, but I'm not sure I know what a knoll is. I, I, I've only ever heard that when people are talking about the Kennedy assassination. I assume it's a hillock. But I didn't want to say hillock when a president had his brain shot out because it's vaguely comical, isn't it? You go, the president's been shot. Oh, well, from where? A hillock? Of what? <laughs> so they say no. And they go, oh, so you go, oh, no, who shot him? And what the fuck's a no? It adds to the mystery. <laughs> anyway, so I looked down and I realized that one person, I use the term loosely, had sort of sat there, okay, and the security had let her and people were ignoring her. And I thought, oh, uh, Anyway, she was a bit... Right, and, oh, my God, she was... <laughs> I, I'm trying to be politically correct tonight. I'm trying to avoid the phrase, fat mental bird. But <laughs> that's what she was. Why do people use euphemisms like that? They go... Like they're trying to, but you've said it. We know what you... You'll say, you've said mental. In fact, you've said it so more people can understand... The deaf and foreigners can understand what you're saying now. <laughs> And they don't want to say fat anymore. They use euphemisms for fat. They don't want to say fat because it's a derogatory term. It's not. It's descriptive, OK? They say things like, oh, you know Brenda? No. You, oh, you know Brenda. F but big girl. <laughs> but what, seven foot? No, not tall. But, but <laughs> big... What does she look like? Oh, but... You know, she's clammy even in winter. <laughs> Just say fat. You know Brenda. She... She's out of breath, just standing up at her desk. <laughs> I've been accused in the past of having a go at fat people. I've never had a go at fat people. I've only ever pointed out the scientific fact that you get fat, you put on weight, you put on a subcutical layer of fat if you take in more calories than you burn off. That's indisputable, OK? I don't judge them in any other aspect of their life, but... They got fat because they took on more calories than they burned off, OK? And they knew that is what was happening. No one ever got fat behind their own back. No one ever went... Oh, what the fuck's that? Uh, no one's creeping in to thin people's apartments and injecting their lettuce with a million calories, OK? So they, they're doing it. They're doing it with their own free will, and they know that's what's making them fat, OK? You see a fat person surrounded by puddings, right? You go up to him and go, Frank, you know what's making you fat? He doesn't go, is it all the running? He knows it's... <laughs> so what I'm saying is, you get fat if you eat too much, and you know that's what's happening. But I don't judge them in any other aspect of their life. I don't make value judgments in any other corridors of their existence. If I see a fat person, I don't go, oh, he's fat, therefore he's probably jolly. <laughs> a lot of them are miserable. <laughs> if I see a fat girl, I don't go, oh, she'd be pretty if she lost weight. That's rarely the case, so don't... <laughs> A lot of them started eating because they had fuck all to lose, if I'm being... <laughs> I don't want any fat people to feel uncomfortable at one of my gigs, so next time, buy two seats. <laughs> I, um, I'm joking, I'm joking. I've got, I haven't got a problem with fat people. I I, in fact, I feel sorry for them. <laughs> no, even though it is their own fault, and it is their own fault, I feel sorry for them, particularly women, because I think fat is a feminist issue. Men get fat and we go, fuck it, all bought and paid for, right? <laughs> we don't come under the same scrutiny 
of society as women, because they're inundated with how they should look. This size zero models and magazines with look like this and, and this diet, that diet, keep your man. And I think they make such an effort. You see fat girls, they make an effort. They've always got lovely hair, aren't they? They're always having their hair done. They've got, I always, you watch, they've always got lovely hair and lovely long nails. They make an effort. Anything but jogging. <laughs> right, but... <laughs> They love high heels, don't they? Fat girls, they love high heels. They think it makes their legs look less... It doesn't. They, it... <laughs> <laughs> you can just hear them coming now. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the lino. Up and down the lawn, it's good for it. Go on, there you go. <laughs> but I'm not having a go. Um, I was into Radio 4 the other day, and there was a discussion about political correctness. My name came up straight away, as always, OK? And this woman was going, well, yeah, it's not right. You know, it's not clever. He makes fun of fat people. He makes jokes about fat people. And it's not right. I mean, he wouldn't make jokes about gay people, would he? And being fat is like being gay. What? No, it... <laughs> no it's not. You can't choose your sexuality. We've established you choose to be fat by eating... To... Right, OK. But when, with your sexuality, you're born, you grow up, you discover you like same-sex relationships, you move to Brighton, and, that, <laughs> and that's it. You're gay. With being fat, you have to work... For being fat to be the same as being gay, you'd have to be born straight, grow up knowing you're straight, but gradually and consciously wean yourself on to cock. <laughs> I... <laughs> Do you know what? It doesn't happen. Happy 16th birthday, son. This is Raoul, right? <laughs> Suck his cock. <laughs> uh, I'm heterosexual father. Oh, with his newfangled words. Suck his cock. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I don't like cock. Doesn't like cock. How do you know if you've never tried it? <laughs> well, uh, ah, <laughs> su suck his cock. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, suck Raoul's cock for your father. He's paid for it. Go on, suck. I don't like. Just try it. Just suck a little bit of cock. Right. Just try. Oh, oh, he's bloody playing with his cock. Put it in your mouth. <laughs> Put it in your mouth. Oh, don't, uh, come on, suck it, you bastard, suck it. But, oh, it's not so bad, is it? Oh, oh, I, oh. I fucking love these. <laughs> when that happens, being fat will be like being gay. Until then, it ain't. <laughs> I was on a plane going from New York to LA this year. And they've got proper fat people in America. Oh, really, they put ass to shame, really. <laughs> you see one and you think, oh, it's a fat person, I've seen that. We got them in England. Yeah, big fat face. Big... What the fuck are they? 